James Black, and you're at Popularity. With this album, was there pressure to follow up to the previous success that Finger Eleven has had? Um, I think there was. The feeling within the band that we wanted to continue to succeed, but I don't think. Um, I think the one, the one tidbit of truth that should be revealed is when we wrote Paralyzer. It was very much a, a strike of lightning, we, and we kind of, though we took a long time to record the song properly, in writing of it, it kind of just happened. And we're not entirely sure what the hell happened. It just, it happened. And our other big song was a song called One Thing and the same thing. So as much as we had pressure that we placed on ourselves to succeed and be better than we were in the last record, we also are confronted with this thing of, well, you know, our ultimate success. We really kind of have no idea how we did that. So we can't really go about copying it. And so that was sort of a, a nice relief for us. We just decided, okay, well, let's go into this with the ambition of making a great record, but we really have no process to try to copy or cash in on because we have no idea what that was. What decides that the time is right to go into the studio to record an album, or is it really just an ongoing process? Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to... It's hard to say what, it, 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 there's, there happens to just be a moment when it's like, okay, it's happening, we're, we're ready to make a record, we're all, we're all full steam ahead now. Uh, and I don't really know what makes that happen, it just, if we start just dabbling in songwriting, getting ideas flowing, and usually the first four or five songs never end up making it on the record, and it's going to just sort of experiments. And I think... There's usually one or two songs that raises a bar, and that's when everyone sort of looks at the same time and goes, oh, okay, well, it just started now. We're on to something here. And then from that point, it's, uh, it's sort of full steam ahead for everyone. But there is definitely a moment that becomes the, like, okay, we're officially, we've started now. We're on to something here. And I don't know. I don't We can't pinpoint when that happens, but it, there definitely is a moment. Do you find that songs come naturally to the band now? Does creating music ever get any easier? Um, you know, creating music, creating musical sounds, it becomes easier and easier and easier. But creating songs that, uh, like, I, I feel like as the years have gone on, I've gotten older. And I've, I've left a certain type of song behind that I don't listen to anymore just because of the way that the, the trajectory of life. Um, for me, it seems now it's harder and harder and harder to make a song that I would love when I was 13 and I would still love when I'm 35. And so I think that's where, and that's really the kind of songs we're trying to make. So uh, that's where it's become more challenging. Making sounds of music is never been easier. We're all quite happy with how, how we've progressed as musicians, but making a song that lyrically and melodically just feels right and will feel right for a good many years after, it, that that becomes a harder challenge when you, I, I suppose as you just kind of raise the bar of your own stuff, you're like, you know, we want to write this caliber of song, so we can't you know, it, it, it's more like a personal challenge thing. It becomes harder because you raise your own uh, expectations. At this point, what do you value most about the band? Uh, I think it's, I, there's, I mean, there's so many things. That, the one would be the, the expression of it all and able to like, okay, I can get together with four of my best buddies and create something that means something. Uh, after the fact that I feel like uh, at the end of the process uh, I've got something out of me that I couldn't have gotten out in another way. Not always angry, not always sad, not always happy, just these strange, almost like colors and pictures inside you that, uh, I don't know, you, it's, it's just we're just really lucky to all be able to get together and combine our talents to do something like that. And then the other thing is just being, you know, we're, we're traveling around the world as a bunch of friends in a luxury tour bus, playing for crowds every night. Like, most of it is pretty awesome. 
When do you feel you're in your most creative state, and has that state changed over time? Um, I suppose it has. I feel the most creative when I'm completely isolated. Um, and that used to be probably from between 11 o'clock at night and 5 in the morning uh, because of the solitude of it all. Um, but now I suppose maybe I get up a little bit earlier when I'm at home and I, I have that solitary time between like 11 and 5 or something like that. But it's always that area where there's no there's no pushing there's no pressing from any other angle it's just yourself dealing with whatever it is you're working on um of course that doesn't always happen when we get together in the jam space it's just a bunch of us all at once making noise that's a different experience altogether but i'm most inclined to dig really deep into something if i'm so i know i have lots of time to myself Creating music is like organizing an accident. What do you think of that statement? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it, it kind of is because I like to think of it as like that someone brings a soccer ball and then everyone else starts kicking it around and, uh, you know, it starts bouncing off of everything and you have no idea. It's knocking things over. Nobody gets to pick it up. Nobody gets to stop it. It's just constantly moving. And then at the end of it, it's like everyone just stops at once and goes, okay, what did we... What happened? What just happened there? So, yeah, I, I think it's a, in a lot of ways that's a pretty accurate uh, statement. You're you're really looking for happy accidents that you can line up in a row and make a song out of. I think uh, that's one thing that's really been enlightened with uh, digital recording is the ability is now of picking pieces of a song up and flipping them around and moving them around and. Uh, has provided some pretty interesting accidents that you say, you, you say you're making something, you're working on something for hours, and it's like, yeah, you know, this is really cool, but it just feels stuck in this weird rut, like, this is what we do, and we always do this. Why does it feel so us to do this? And then you sit down the computer, and then with it, like, just by mistake, you can pull something two bars to the left and then play it back, and all of a sudden the the vocals are happening in a different spot in the same music, and it creates a, just like, oh, that's it, that's it, that's the one thing we couldn't think of, there it is. And really, all of that are just random accidents that you're hoping work out, so. What were the key challenges that the band faced this time around during the creative process? Um, I think the songwriting was the challenge. I think before we got to the studio, a lot of the work was just in basically holding yourself to a mirror and, and looking at your own ideas and objectively going, this could be better. Uh, this is great. This isn't great. Uh, I don't know what the song's about. So I, just things that when you're in the midst of making something, a lot of times you, you turn off your criticism because you got to get through it. you gotta, you got to do something. And so... I don't know, it's like a two-part thing, I think. The, the most challenge is to be able to look back at our own stuff and think, how can we make this better before we get to the studio and, and lay it down for eternity. So I think that was where the, the real challenge was. And I think uh, after having made enough records and learned from some producers who ultimately provide that objectivity, uh, we, we learned a bunch along the way, and so we were able to do it this time. Can you describe your attraction to music, and has that changed at all over time? Man, I suppose it has changed over time, but really, there's a there's an obvious like social aspect of it when you know a song can unite a group of people, even if they're total strangers, in order to sing along together and all move in the same direction. There's something really appealing and something very very powerful about that. And the, I think the the major thing for me is that songs make pictures in your head and so uh, I don't know that's what it's always been for me it's just been like a not only do you get an amazing album but it's almost like a free ticket to a movie that you, it's going to be different every time do you find that when you perform songs that they are evolving or changing with each time that you play them do the songs ever grow yeah I think uh, over a stretch of touring, certain songs will evolve and maybe it will inject like an instrumental jam into the middle of it or will start to extend the beginning or the end of it or, um, 
you maybe go on the road and you go back and listen to one of the older records and realize like, oh shit, I haven't been playing this part that on the record was quite important and I haven't been doing that live. So, and you kind of, yeah, the songs have all passed themselves and sometimes you need to rein them back in and sometimes it's just fun to watch them keep going and keep growing. I think that's the ultimate reason for doing live recordings and things is if the songs evolve and change that it merits being recorded. Did any of the songs on the album surprise you by taking a different direction than you originally envisioned? Yeah, I think a, a good portion of them did. Um, the, uh, a good section of the writings that we had done was in Ontario in this cabin on the lake. It was a beautiful, tranquil spot. It was sort of just uh, beers and barbecues and making music. And there's a certain quality to the song that we were making because we were all together and we were all isolated, but there's also a, an element of that kind of living that comes through in the music, and so it felt a little rustic, it felt a little kind of folky and wooden. And uh, then we went to make the record in New York, and all of a sudden the feeling of New York was there, and these kind of wooden sounds and feelings felt that they felt very folky, and it was like, you know, here we are in this awesome, fast-paced town where we're a wicked rock and roll band. What, why are we making this, like, really soft little record here? Why don't we... Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can honestly say I think New York kind of forced the, the energy of the record to be a little higher and, and the sounds, the electric guitar and all that stuff as a result of just the, the environment there.